Up until now, I really didn't have a problem with drinking whiskey out of a container that looks like this versus this. But what happens when a non-whiskey drinker like myself starts taking whiskey more seriously? Will I ever be able to tell the difference between a scotch or a bourbon, or pull out those awesome aromas that all the sommeliers can out of a Glencairn glass? But most importantly, out of 365 days, where will I rank the world's top whiskeys versus the lower ones? Let's find out as Short Guy drinks whiskey. How's it going, everybody? Brada Kimo here with Short Guy, that's me, drinks whiskey, which we're going to be doing a little bit later on. But before getting into that, I want to show you guys the first firearm review I'm going to be doing this year. And if you're not used to seeing that, I'll leave a link right up here so you guys can kind of check some of them out. But the first one I'm going to be doing this year is on this upper that I got from Hardin Arms. This is their 10 and a half inch Crucible. This is going to be an awesome review, so can't wait to start that one. And they also sent me a muzzle brake. This item here, which is called their HD SMC, which is really supposed to help the muzzle climb in AR-15 pistols. But enough about that. Let's drink some whiskey. We're sticking with the American whiskey lineup here. So we've already done the Tennessee straight whiskey. That was all the Jack Daniels stuff here. Then we moved over to the Kentucky bourbon, which was the Woodford Reserve. Those two companies are actually owned by the same bigger parent company, which is kind of weird. But now we're stepping over to rye. So you notice has to be corn-based. Most of it has to be corn-based. Now, rye has to be at least 51% rye. And to do that, we're going to review Knob Creek. I'm going to break this wax top open. Here comes the pour. Ah, that looks pretty good. All right. There is Knob Creek rye, and this is beautiful. This is more of a honey color, not a darker amber. Definitely a lighter in color. And this looks fantastic. Let me get my nose in here. Oh, yeah. That's definitely more spicy. And I think that's what rye is supposed to be, a little bit more spicy. Definitely more alcoholic. This is 100 proof. So this is probably the highest percentage whiskey I've, I've tasted. Highest proof, at least. I can smell that oak. And this is definitely sweeter. Now, I know before in the last video I mentioned that I thought it was impossible to pull those individual flavors out like apple and cinnamon but this is definitely spicier and i think that's because i'm just starting to to really pay attention to what's going on in each whiskey so i think as i go along i'm going to be able to pull more out of it let's get a taste definitely more of an alcoholic burn on that one but man does that develop on the tongue Little bit more burn on this one. Oh, I can feel it right down here in my chest. Not a lot of burn in the throat though, but I do feel it down here. Now, Knob Creek is made by Jim Beam. And weirdly enough, Jim Beam is owned by Suntory Alcohol, which is in Japan. A lot of people don't know that, but Knob Creek is part of the small batch series. So in there, I think there's Booker's, there's Bankers, there's Basil Hayden, and then there's Knob Creek. Let's talk a little bit more about the name Knob Creek. So they named it after the creek that was running right past Abraham Lincoln's place way back in the day. Now, as mentioned before, this is part of their small batch series. And these are aged typically longer than their other ones that are maybe two years or three years. That's very important because the aging process brings more of the flavor from that charred oak barrel up into the whiskey. As it's sitting in there longer and going kind of in and out of that barrel, getting all that great sugary taste and caramelization pulled out of there. Now, Jim Beam is huge. They've got 70 plus warehouses and they know exactly where that sweet spot is. Now, I didn't mention, but when we did Woodford Reserve, their rick houses are temperature. So they want to try to get as much heat all through the seasons as much as possible. So they get a lot of expansion and shrinkage in those barrels so that whiskey goes in and out and in and out. Because when it goes into the barrel, it's clear. It's just like water. But it's that aging maturation process that makes it brown and amber colored just like this. Out of their 70 plus warehouses, they know exactly which ones they want to put and where in those rick houses they want to put their Knob Creeks and their Basil Haydens and their Bookers and their Bankers. They got it down to a science. Now, they don't use heat treatment like Woodford Reserve, but because they know where those sweet spots are at in the warehouse, they can guarantee that expansion and shrinkage because of that barometric pressure to make sure that those age properly. Now, if you look on the Knob Creek uh bottles like this right down here in this area it just says patiently aged they used to say nine years but the rye version was the first one that actually said patiently aged 
So you can expect these to be aged a little bit longer and that brings out that great taste. Like most distilleries, you can go through a tour, and part of that tour is you have the opportunity to bottle your own bottle of Knob Creek. You get a bottle, you stick it down on this kind of washer thing, it shoots whiskey in it, swirls it around, they send it down the line, and at the ending, you can personalize it by sticking your thumbprint on the wax knob. So it's pretty sweet. Now, they're one of the largest whiskey producers in the United States. They use column stills to get their stuff going, but they have, like I said, 70 plus Rick houses. They know exactly what kind of taste to get out of which Rick house and what positioning to put those barrels when they mature. Let's give this one more taste here. Man, now I can really smell that, that oak. Mm. Oh, that's nice. Oh, a little bit of burn coming out. You know, I'm going to have to place this second. I think what I'm developing is I really don't like mellow whiskeys. I like a little bit more complex tasting. So I'm going to place this right under, and I still think I like the Jack Daniels single barrel a little bit better than this rye. But for the first rye on the countdown, this does really well. All right, guys, that's the ending of the Knob Creek Rye Review. If you liked it, please give me the thumbs up. Share it as much as possible. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. And remember... O Colima Luna. Yee! Mmm. Mmm.